Hi, love. Hi, honey. <laughs> Welcome to the show. Thank you. Thank you for being here. Thank you for having me. On the in between. Mm, that's that's the name. I know that's I hadn't nice. given I hadn't given her the name before. <laughs> I had no idea beforehand. But we came up with the name, talking to Tiana's husband, um, who wanted to be here. He wants mm -hmm. to make an appearance. He said he has a lot about the in between. <laughs> so he said when he said that, I was like. He was on FaceTime last week, mm -hmm. and I was like, boom, that's it. Thanks. So, okay. That's who like gave it. us the name. I like the name. It was God sent, y'all. It was God sent. That's right. Because I had been struggling with a name. <laughs> but anywho, we so often overlook the spaces between destinations, forgetting that the journey often lies in the in-between. I'm your host, Corey Curran. Hello, 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 and welcome back to in between with me your host Corey Corinne sitting here and you guys on this third episode I have one of my closest closest friends we've been friends for over 20 years at this point um here to talk about what the in between looks like for her so y'all we gonna talk about singlehood we gonna talk about woman stuff we gonna just talk about the whole gamut and it's gonna be a great story and you're gonna love it so i advise you to sit here and listen and y'all one of the things i would like to add is that i'm wearing her outfit yes and actually i'm wearing her lip gloss as well oh i'm also wearing her eyelashes i guess that Corey is brought to you today by modernish clothing modernish. and beauty and just modernish. Just, okay, just modernish. Excuse me. So that is one of the great, great things she's going to talk about today. And yes, thanks for being here. You're welcome. <laughs> so let's just get started. Mm -hmm. Let's mm -hmm. tell us your journey. Tell us who you are and who I know who you are, and I know mm -hmm. your journey, but mm -hmm. they don't. So okay, well, um, I just turned forty in August. So whoop whoop, eighty three babies. Um, <laughs> But um, as far as my dating journey, right? That's just whatever much that. you want people to know. But yes, okay. lean, let's lean into that. Okay. Well, um, yeah, I'm forty. Grew up in the um, Washington metropolitan area, better known as the DMV. I went to school with uh, Corey here um, at for, uh, FAMU for a few years, but then came on back to this area. Um, dating in this area was very hard. Um, so I had a few relationships, um, and did a lot of dating. Um, and so, which kind of led me to where I am now, which I'm in a relationship now. I have been for about a little over a year. Um, but it's a good one. So a lot different from the others. What's <laughs> different about it? Well, I just feel like maybe, and I'm not even really like blaming them. I think it's like, I dated a lot of people within my age range. And when I say my age range, I'm talking about my age, like two, two, three years, five years older than me. So I still feel like that's kind of in my age range. Mm -hmm. So with that being said, I just felt like they were living life, enjoying life. And um, I probably was too. I don't always think um, I always made the best decisions myself or did the best things. And um, it was probably a lot of immaturity on both parts. And so that just led me to be where I am now. Um, but I, I appreciate my journey because I feel like that led me here, um, where I feel like I am mature and I can have a nice relationship with a good person at the right time. So you mentioned timing. Mm -hmm. Can you tell me how crucial timing is when it comes to finding your person or heck starting a business or, mm -hmm. well, you know, I'm a spiritual person so uh, I'm a Christian so for me everything is about like God's timing so I think for me it's like you can try but when it's your time it's just your time so what you think Nothing might is be gonna stop God's time let me tell you that's right because <laughs> let me tell you I feel like God put me on hold for almost 10 years I feel like he was not really saying much of nothing he was almost kind of like wait mm -hmm. for like 10 years and how did you how did you feel like, how it, did you reconcile that mm -hmm. <laughs> very frustrated um, I felt like right around 30 is when I felt this pause thing. And I don't think I even all the way knew what God was telling me in that moment. So I feel like it was one of those things where it took me time to really understand what he was trying to say. Mm -hmm. And um, after that, once I actually realized what he was trying to say, I said, okay, that's fine. 
and I still kept trying to date and do things, my business, all that. But it wasn't until when I really got locked into what I feel like God was trying to do. Um, that's when I knew when he was telling me it was go time. So, um, and it's funny because when he said go time, I didn't even really get a full green light. I get more of a yellow light. <laughs> then finally, I was like, cautious. Right, exactly. It was like, okay, yeah, but go ahead, but proceed slowly. Um, and I feel like just now, like right now, is I'm getting more of like a green light. So, yeah, I feel like all of that took me like 10 years to get there. So, your timing can be one thing, and God's timing is another. And guess what's going to happen? God's timing. It's going to win. At, yeah. Always. Mm -hmm. Especially with us as mm -hmm. believers. He is, he be like, why are you playing with me? Mm -hmm. Like I said, <laughs> sit. But exactly. you keep not sitting, so you go, mm -hmm. you're going to sit. Each time you do it, you have, you're going to come back, mm -hmm. and it's going to be the same result. Um, but how do you, I know you were frustrated. Were you frustrated with God at all? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's Very, real. Yeah, I was. I didn't really understand, especially when I wasn't really locked into the whole, like, what are you trying to tell me? I was like, oh, what is this? Mm -hmm. And then I just kept feeling like these moments when I was like, upset and I would be like crying and frustrated and it was just like then that's what I'm hearing like the still voice of be still in love you know? it sounds corny but it's real but it's real it's it real. is real and I really felt like okay um okay it, it, it has to be a reason for all of this mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. um which makes sense now because to be honest with you I don't really know if you know when you when you get when you want certain types of blessings we have to think about where am I prepared for that, you know? So I feel like, well, would I have been prepared for all the things that I'm going to get if I would have just been that same person that just, you know, God gave me everything too soon. Let's just put it that way. So, yeah. Would you have been? No. <laughs> well, there you have it. Mm -mm. <laughs> everything. It real. Everything is, is by design. <laughs> Let's just say That's that. That's right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And... We have to get, honestly, we sometimes have to get out of our own way. And I think that's what I'm hearing you say. Mm -hmm. um, but 10 years for a lot of people, and I'm sure a lot of you are, are like, oh, yeah. my God. So was I. Can you imagine that was me going through it thinking, <laughs> really? Okay, God. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and yeah. like, that's so freaking real. Mm -hmm. I, I think he has me in a holding pattern right now. Actually, mm -hmm. I think he has me in a pruning season. Mm -hmm. And I'm totally okay with that. <clears throat> But the thing is, I too didn't become okay until about, mm -hmm. until about now where mm -hmm. I'm like, okay, I see what you're doing. I got yeah, it. I take my hand up. off. Yeah. Um, and I'm going to be honest, y'all. When you take your hand off, you have so much peace. Mm -hmm. You'd be happier that way. You'd be so much happier mm -hmm. because I just remember part of your journey, you anxiety. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and anxiety can mm -hmm. cripple you. Yeah. Um, but let's just get into your single season. Mm -hmm. What did what is singleness? Like what did it bring you? I know it brought some frustrations, mm -hmm. but on the good on the good side of life, what was it to you? Wisdom. Mm. Yeah. Can you speak more to that? Yes. Yeah. So um just going back to the whole thing of me learning how to be, how not to be, who I want to date, who I don't want to date, what they should be versus you know, what I should be going for, what they should be, what I should be. You know, all those different things like that. Taking away all the superficial stuff. Mm -hmm. Really getting into, like, who you work with best. Mm -hmm. You know, um, how you do things versus how they do things. How does that fit? How does that balance? That's what I'm finding now, you know, is really what the key thing is, you know. Because it's really not about finding, like, a perfect person or anything like that. But how do they, how do two imperfect people fit perfectly in each other's lives? And that's kind of how I think it, like almost like just, you know, you know, just lock right into the things that I need versus what you need and all that stuff like that. And how do two imperfect people fit perfectly into each other's lives? Because mm -hmm. you both have your own lives, you both have your mm -hmm. own existences, and you both have your own previous experiences. So mm -hmm. how do you combine those lives? Just being open, I would say. I think that's the biggest thing because um, it's also too about, well, you do want the compatibility factor to be there. You know, so that's that's the number one thing because you do because if it's just not there, it's just not there. What's and, compatibility? Well, I think that people and I know you and I have even kind of spoken about this before about the whole concept of well, what does it really matter? Mm -hmm. Well, in my book, it does because it makes it easier. 
So it's not that you can't be with somebody that you're not compatible with, but you're just making it a little bit harder, mm-hmm. I would say. So with that being said, I just think that that's something you should try, you know, off the bat. And then after that, go into, of course, being open. Mm-hmm. Um, and then, of course, we all have our ways that we used to do things. And, you know, some of us, you know, you've been single for a while. You know, you're used to like I said, doing things a certain way and really just kind of letting that person into your life. And it really just comes down to being open, basically. All of that comes down to being open. And throwing what the ideal of whatever you have in your head out the window, because basically it's not God. If it's if it's God's mm-hmm. timing, it's also okay. What you need and what will actually advance His purpose in your life. Mm-hmm. So exactly, and it might not be anything that you thought, but it actually be great for for you. you. Yeah, mm-hmm. He gives you what you need. Yeah, I'm a firm believer. Mm-hmm. Um, so. <laughs> Single has brought you wisdom, <laughs> yeah. but it also brought you, it gave you time and it mm-hmm. gave you time to do things like start a business. Yeah. So speak. Mm-hmm. Can you speak on that a little bit? Well, actually, okay. Taking it back to me wanting to be an entrepreneur. I wanted to be one. I knew I wanted to be one before I went to college. So I was 17. Um, I just knew that the nine to five thing. I was like, that's not something I think I want to do for the rest of my life. So, um, but that was kind of on hold when I had gone to school, came back, got my job. I didn't really even think about it too much. It was in the back of my head, but I didn't really think, think about it. And there were no plans. And so it got to probably be about early to mid thirties. And I said, you know what, you know, I'm, you know, I'm feeling like there's something else I should really be doing, you know, but the type of business that I wanted to do was not the type of business that I wanted to do at that time. Mm-hmm. So it was a music thing I really wanted to do before. And I was like, well, I don't want to necessarily get into that anymore, but I don't want to do a business. And so I got into this relationship. We're hanging out all the time, doing all this other stuff. He goes and he goes and moves to a different country. And so it's funny because as upset as I was, I hit the ground running with the business stuff. And um, I said, okay, God, I I hear you. And so um, ever since then, I've just been kind of going strong with that. A lot of bumps and, and learning you, along the way, but going strong with it. And isn't it funny how God uses those situations to bring you right where he needs you? Yeah. Because it mm-hmm. was the same time you were dating that guy. I was <laughs> dating a guy. Mm-hmm. And he, although I knew I wrote the book, but although I knew I wanted to write the book, I didn't. I was. And this is while I was dating him. I was conceptualizing a way that I would get an audience prior to me writing the book. And so that's how I started the blog. But I didn't start the blog, honestly, a month until like a month later. Mm -hmm. Um, And that's how I started Love Tales. Mm -hmm. Um, And I think my first blog on Love Tales was um, a a goodbye letter to him. Mm -hmm. Or something like that. It was something like that, y'all. And I remember I read, I sent it to somebody like, can you proofread this for me? She was like, you and -and so-and-so broke up? I was like, oh yeah, by the way. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. But, um, But that's, and that's how I got started with that piece, mm-hmm. which ultimately led me here. My, my, my background has always been media. Mm-hmm. Um, and I was doing Love Tell Shorts. And my mom was like, you know, you need to pick up that camera and stop paying people to do something you already knew, know how to do. Well, mm-hmm. do something I, she sent me to college to do. And I was mm-hmm. like, I have not picked up a camera in so long, Ma. And she was like, well, you better figure it out. You got one. Mm-hmm. Figure it out. That's and I picked it up, about, right? figuring <laughs> it out. Yeah. And I picked it up and I never put it down. Mm-hmm. Here I am writing scripts. Here I am doing this podcast. Mm-hmm. Um, and so that instance led me to us sitting on this couch. Okay. So I, I will say that God or uh, ending up to a, a relationship, it can be the birth of something greater. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Definitely. Mm-hmm. Um, because, ew, can you imagine him being right there? No. <laughs> <laughs> because I know what you're talking about. That's a no. I will use another word for doing the podcast. No. <laughs> um, single and our single and and our singleness, our singlehood, whatever it's called, mm-hmm. it's the only time in our lives and some of it some of us have extended periods of singleness. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, but that's the only time in our lives where we get to do things like a podcast, like a business, um, travel as um single people, whether you want to do it with your girlfriend, solo trip, family, whoever. That people forget about that people forget about. And so I 
can you speak to just how crucial it is to optimize this time? Because once you marry, once you have kids, shoot, you can get divorced. But once you have kids, mm-hmm. you know, right. that's really kind of it. Yeah. Um, so can you just speak to that piece? So I would say, yeah. See, the thing is, is it probably won't be hard to do once we can. Well, I know for me, I can speak for myself. Um, once we take ourselves out of those feelings that we got. Mm-hmm. Sometimes, like, I guess when you're single, you, you're kind of feeling like you're in this rut sometimes, you know. And I think once we can get out of that space, you can be very productive, you know. There's a lot of time that you have, like you said. And I think that's just one of the things where you just kind of got to get mentally in. What what I'm saying is basically you have to mentally just get into that space. Because I think once you're mentally there, everything else is just kind of going to flow. Did you, did you take time in your a single journey to prepare yourself for your next stages well yes I do feel like that I did that I did a lot of like praying I did a lot of reading the bible but not even just that I did a lot of like reflecting on how scenarios went down and how I could do things differently I did you know uh, because I do like to consider myself very self-aware so I did do that um and also just kind of like Physically and mentally doing, you know, some things for myself. I've definitely gone and sat down and talked to a therapist before. So all of those things let me here. Because I think that's really what it's all about anyway. Like the whole single journey is more so about like who you're becoming. That's who you're becoming. So. And because I remember you went and you told me to come. I came, I met you there to that one, that one um, thing with the man with the dreads. Yeah, yeah, that was so nice. You know what? I had, you know, uh, I had up my computer. Steven Speaks. Is that his name? Right. I fortunately can't pronounce the last name. I just don't want to say it wrong. Okay. So that's I can't either. But yeah, but his name was... um Stefan. Stefan, yes. Um, it was I should have made a face. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he was great though. And what I liked about him is the what, his delivery. It was funny because I had my computer up. I was listening to another podcast. And I think from this person was an episode she had with him. And he just started talking. I set my computer up. I was like cleaning around, cleaning up my house in the background. And um, he just started talking some real stuff. And I said, oh, man. Okay. And then it prompted me to like go follow him, look into more of his stuff. He had some like book, um, some audio version that I started listening to. I really kind of got into it. Come to find out he had a seminar like in another two weeks. And then that's when I called you. I was like, oh, we're going. And I really enjoyed it. It was nice. I really did. So mm-hmm. was that also you preparing yourself for Yes, it absolutely the was. Next. Right. Because I was like, I need to make sure I understand everything he's saying. Let me try to take this all in and really just. And, you know, we all get information from people all the time. Mm-hmm. So, you know, you log into whoever you want to, mm-hmm. whoever that person is. But I think with that being said, just take it. Take what works for you, works for you. See, it how you, see how you can make it apply, and then go from there. Because it is hard with so much information so going on to be able to really know, what am I supposed to really be doing? But that's it. That's all you do. Just take little bits and pieces from everybody, see how you can make it work for yourself. And I will say this, because I, I li- listen to Stefan Speaks. I listened mm-hmm. to him for a very long time. Mm-hmm. The Matthew Hussies of the world. Mm-hmm. Every, I've listened to them all. Um, but like she said, take it. Um, and take what works for you, mm-hmm. of course, and even us. There's no, there's no right way. There's no right answer. Our journeys don't won't look like yours. Their journeys aren't gonna look like ours. Mm-hmm. Um, but you can, in a way, find just comfort in, you know, other people's stories. I think another thing is like the plans that God has for your life. So if your plans are like to have you and I tell you that all the time I do think God has big plans for you so you would think that you, then, then we have to go back to a space with just simple like one two three common sense so to speak basically if you're somebody who has big plans you may have a long waiting period to get yourself together in a lot of different ways I mean you might because you have a lot you have to do I have but yeah a lot of plans you have to fulfill you know so, and there's nothing wrong with that. Mm-hmm. And, and just because we can't see that doesn't mean it's not there. And that's why I'm talking about headspace and like getting your mental right. Because if you can picture that for yourself and really lock into what you need to be doing and just filter all that other stuff out, 
instead of really thinking about what's happened, really just lock into what you need to be doing, you're going to be fine. I receive that. Mm-hmm. I definitely, for like, for me personally, I mm-hmm. receive that. Um, Cause I do believe, I, I don't think it's by mistake. I do think it's by, I mean, some people might say it's circumstance cause we live in this area, but, <laughs> um, <laughs> but I don't think it's, I think it's by design. Mm-hmm. Um, a lot of our friends are in the same boat, not only because they live in this area, but them, they too, we, we, I mean, you surround yourself with a lot of people who are just like you. So, you know, I have creative endeavors. So do you, and you know, mm-hmm. so on and so forth. Um, and a lot of us are 40 and un, I would say unmarried. Mm-hmm. I'll just say that. Mm-hmm. So, mm-hmm. and without children. So, mm-hmm. um, He's done a lot with us in our in-between times. Yeah. And I'm, I look back and I'll be like, I ain't too bad at it. I'm not because I've grown. Mm-hmm. Um, we enjoyed life. That's for sure. We enjoy. That's <laughs> it. That's that. just like, about We were that. just literally okay. talking about. Yeah. Okay. So before I push record, she mm-hmm. said, do you miss being 30? Mm-hmm. I said, yeah. Yeah. I think about it all the time. Mm-hmm. Cause, <laughs> I said, because that was before life had to get real. Mm-hmm. Um, with us having to make certain decisions, now we're like, uh-oh. Yeah. <laughs> um, and before careers really started, and careers and houses and... Mm-hmm. And wanting promotions and, you know, everything that comes with entrepreneurship, all that. Where we could just go to brunch and then pass out in each other's living rooms. Yeah. <laughs> Just do that all day and get up and go to work. Tonight. And get up and go to work and yeah. not and not feel like crap. Yeah. Um, not have to worry about getting a bunch of stuff done, a bunch of tasks, a bunch of tasks, <laughs> all to do list. <laughs> um, yeah, mm-hmm. I I I miss that. Mm-hmm. I do. Um, and if you're in those positions, do not rush it. Do not rush it. Just enjoy. It. Enjoy. That's fun time. I think mm-hmm. people take that for granted. Seriously. I do too. Really do. Like, I do too. The fun and all the freedom and stuff. Because the older you get, well, well, ideally, the older you get, the more money you have, which means, mm-hmm. honestly, the more access you have mm-hmm. um, and uh, the more stable you are. And you, your free time becomes, and then you, everybody around here is just like us. Yeah. So our free time. Free time is less. Yes. You have more of that and less time. Well, <laughs> now we do. Yeah, yeah. But right back now, then, right it was then, like, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, um, more time. <laughs> more yeah, time. It yeah, it yeah. switched. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, those are some good days. Oh, yeah. Um, and we still have great days ahead of us. Yeah. Don't yeah. get it twisted. Mm-hmm. We in a whole not other way. In a whole nother way. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, but that's just to say, live it up, revel in that moment, those yeah, moments, basically. because they're fleeting. Those moments are fleeting. Mm-hmm. So if you're in them now, take our word. Mm-hmm. Enjoy. Yeah. Bask. Um, I'm reminiscing. That's what I'm doing. <laughs> girl. So one thing that we both have in common and um, one of the other reasons I really wanted you here is we both have waited and been in our in-between times and so on and so forth, as you guys know. But mm-hmm. that's also led us to another point in life mm-hmm. with... Um, our reproduct woman woman stuff woman mm-hmm. stuff mm-hmm. um and our reproductive issues um mm-hmm. how has what you've gone through and just so and just this is me being transparent i've had fibroids i have endometriosis i had but i had endometriosis at what 29 when they diagnosed me mm-hmm. i think i got fibroids they diagnosed me with fibroids i had like a small one maybe at like 33 right. in my lining right. and then mm-hmm. It didn't cause me any issues. It didn't start causing me issues until 2021, Mm -hmm. 2022. I had them removed. 2023, they came back. Mm -hmm. So, um, all of my thirties, granted, like we said, we had fun, but all of my thirties, I struggled with women, reproductive issues, Mm -hmm. painful periods. Um, I didn't start bleeding heavily until I got fibroids, but bleeding through stuff in public. Mm -hmm. Um, just, and this is really just me speaking as a woman and being transparent um, with my girlies out there. So just can you speak how, just can you speak to that at all? Yeah, because, you know, I was pretty much doing the same thing. Uh, mine was, well, mine was just a fibroid thing. I didn't even know what mine was. So it started with me having a hospital visit. 
well, basically, like, killed over, like, didn't even know what was going on. And um, it, it, the pain was just so bad, like, they, they just had to take me to the hospital. And so we didn't really know what that was. And then um, the doctor at the time, she, I didn't really like her response because I feel like she tried to kind of minimize my pain. And uh, I said, okay, I'm going to find me another doctor. So it's funny because when I go to that doctor, she's like, oh, that's what it is. That fibroid there, that fibroid right there. I'm, I don't know what that was. It was just funny how she found it so quickly. I'm like, how come the other doctor didn't? But that's neither here nor there. But we knew what it was. And so um, we just kind of worked around it. But mm -hmm. it was actually a couple hospital visits um, and a lot of talking to the doctor to really figure out what I wanted to do next. So um, I, like you, went in and did the fibroid surgery. I mean, not surgery where they cut, but I did one where they removed it. And um, well, they actually kind of shaved mine down, so to speak, so that they couldn't really remove. Mine was in the lining as well. But um, then they did that. A couple years later, they came back as well. And so with that, it's just been a journey with the whole, like, like the, the period thing. Um, it was just a lot of bleeding, a lot um, very uncomfortable days where I really need to kind of stay home from work, all kinds of stuff like that. So now it's gotten to the point where it's a little bit better, um, just because of the procedures and stuff like that have taken place and it's really kind of helped, but I'm still kind of struggling with it. And it's definitely something I think about, um, especially with me not having children yet and one children. So how does your current partner, how does he take it? fine with it i think um i think he's he's we're both hopeful about it mm -hmm. so um and then just kind of really like being aware so for me it's just talking to different types of doctors um of course your OBGYN, but like fertility doctors all kind of stuff like that so um and really seeing what you can do what what are my options mm -hmm. and you know moving towards what the steps to get to where you want, which is, you know, your baby. Okay. So yeah. <laughs> um, one thing you mentioned was somebody, the, your first doctor minimizing your pain. And mm -hmm. one thing I've realized in this, during this journey, this woman, reproductive medical, whatever, whatever you want to call it a journey, mm -hmm. um, is that we have to advocate for ourselves. Mm -hmm. Um, I know the first time I had an excru actually, who found my endometriosis was my GI doctor uh -huh. because yeah. I went to the hospital yeah. um, and I was telling them I had a, a sharp, I felt like somebody was stabbing me in my side, but for some reason I could like, it was radiating to my chest and they were like, so girl, they gave me an EKG. They didn't do anything down here. They gave me an EKG, asked me if I drove. I told them yes. And then gave me a Percocet and sent me home. Mm. I didn't know I was high because I didn't, I, I just didn't realize, but I just knew I was, I felt like I was floating and, um, <laughs> and I was really nauseous. Yeah. <laughs> and then I realized later, years later, I was mm. like, oh, what's that? Um, mm. And I went to my GI doc. I, I had made an appointment with him and he, and this was my first time meeting him. And he was like, he was like, well, let me give you let's go through this procedure and when I well no no he told me he said it sounds like what you have this is before even before the procedure he said it sounds like what you have is ovarian cysts mm -hmm. and I was like what mm -hmm. I said could they have told me that emergency room he said yeah all they had to do was give me ultrasound like mm -hmm. he was just like I don't and I mean he's not a you know he's not an OBGYN like Honestly, I love my GI doctor. He, out of all my doctors, I don't know. He's probably my favorite. But Because um, you can tell he likes his job. He really cares about his patients. Okay. He's an mm -hmm. older African-American man. He's just great. Okay. But he still did a procedure just to make sure everything was okay. Um, and he told me, he was like, you have endometriosis. Hmm. And where it was connected to is how he saw it. And then he's the one who, who schooled me on what it was. Okay. Um, and so from there, and I remember I went to OB and she's like, well, I don't want to do anything to you because it doesn't matter unless you're trying to have kids. But I'm like, I want to see how far along this is because if it's already attached to other organs that my GI can see, yeah. it means it might be further than what you think. Yeah. Fast forward probably about three or four years. I, I had, um, a laparoscopy and it was what stage four. Mm -hmm. Then those people automatically wanted me to either 
they were like, well, what's your plans for parenthood? Basically, like, because if you don't have any plans, you can go ahead and get a hysterectomy now at age 32. Mm. This woman told me, basically, I can get a hysterectomy. And mm. I was like, that's the devil. I'm, yeah, <laughs> I'm no. out. Mm-hmm. Um, and so, yeah, we just have to really, 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 really advocate for ourselves. I don't remember how I found out I had fibroids. Um, yeah, I haven't. I don't remember. I don't recall right now. Mm. <laughs> it might have been Dr. Thought. Mm. Okay. Okay. Um, yeah, that did a test on me. But yeah. Okay. And yes, it was. The first person that really dug into what was going on. Yeah, time. like he, like I had, I, I went to him. He was like, "Let's go put you through an ultrasound mm-hmm. and a, um, and a transvaginal ultrasound." Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. And he saw them all. He was like, basically, yeah. Mm-hmm. And here's what I can do for you. Okay. Yeah. But even the last time I went to my OBG, YN, over there in California, she was just as crazy as the day is long. She was like. She told me I needed to lose. Well, no, I told her I was, I wanted to know honestly if I was perimenopausal Mm -hmm. because I'm, I'm noticing things. Mm -hmm. And what I was probably noticing was my fibroids were back. But just as far as like. You went to her and you told her that? What? That you were perimenopausal? I wanted her to test me to see if I was. Okay. (laughs) But she was sitting there like. I gave her the symptoms. Okay. I gave her the symptoms. Because I was having heart palpitations. And I was like, I had already been to a car, um, a cardiologist, and I was, and they were like, "Well, stop drinking caffeine." And I was like, "All right, I'll stop drinking." Mm-hmm. I didn't stop. I didn't. I was like, I don't want to stop drinking coffee, but I was like, I won't drink energy drinks in the gym. Mm. Um, but she was like, she got to talking about food, and then she got talking about kids, and if you want to have kids, and I was like, "Ma'am, I'm not here for that. I'm here because of these other complications. Let's put all that aside, and can we get down to what's wrong with me?" Mm-hmm. Um. I, I, I remember I left there feeling, I told my mom, I was like, I feel hopeless. Mm, okay. Because she, it was like, I was looking at her like, first of all, I'm actually kind of uncomfortable. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, and so like, you really have to, and so I'm sitting here right now, I'm like, I don't have an OBGYN because I ain't found one that got sense. So now I'm on another search. <laughs> um, <laughs> and so... Yeah, but you just really have to advocate for yourselves and you know your body. Mm-hmm. And so when people are telling you, no, 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 it's like, no, no, no. Yes, yeah. yes, yes. Something's wrong. And I need for you to run some tests to figure it out. Right. Yeah. Um, but they are, they are so good just throwing women away. Yeah, I, I don't think I knew that your, your journey was like that. I think the, the last few doctors that I had were okay um, in terms of, you know, everything with the learning more about the fire boys and stuff like that. But I... um. For me, it was really just that first one. And Girl. I knew when she was basically like, oh, well, we, you know, you can just come in here and we can see you. I was like, oh, and that type of pain. I have come across some straight up quacks. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, you want me to come in here? I said, so what happens if it's a weekend? <laughs> well, yeah. What if it's what? Ho- I said, well, what happens when it's a weekend? I can't come here. Oh, yeah, that would just be a hospital visit. Oh, so that's what I should do? That's your recommendation? Just keep Go going soon. there. Keep going to the hospital. Okay. Yeah. That's just as, that was the last visit with her, by the as way. it should have been, <laughs> as it should have been. Um, so yeah, we just have to be, um, and and going through these things too makes you question God and be like, Jesus, why, why didn't you just bring me my husband so I can go ahead and just do what I need to do? I know I've had those conversations with yeah, the Lord that too. That's part of the getting frustrated, <laughs> right? Because <laughs> it's like, mm-hmm. come on, I'm tired of even going mm-hmm. through this stuff. Because in a minute, I'm going to be going through something else called menopause. So it's like, I ain't going to get no break. <laughs> you, you get a little while for that. But I'm saying, if it feels like... I got like, you. I got you. It's, it's time is going on. But remember... We they're running into each God, other. But wait a minute now. Remember, we talked about God's timing. So I that, know. So if that's the case, then he knows that's what you want, right? No, he knows. He and I have faith. I have faith. He's going to figure out But I'm like, am I going to jump? Is, is the baby going to pop out and then I'm going to menopause? Like, wh- which one is Maybe. It? <laughs> and I'm like Heavenly Father that seems like a whole lot it might be but guess what he's gonna give you the energy and everything you need that to do seems... with me so it'll be just fine you right tell me girl I'll receive that okay. too cause I'll be like okay you think that you won't be able to deal with a baby at that age no or I think what, I think I'll be able to deal with a baby I'm gonna talk about the energy level girl right? yeah cause but I get yeah. heat flashes hot flashes now you think he's gonna give you all of that nice calm baby 
Hey Amen. I'm going to need mm-hmm. a calm baby. It's just, will I be calm That's having a hot flash? You will be fine. <laughs> Your village will be there to help you. All that stuff will come together. That's a, that's gonna a, give that's you the, the truth. going to give you everything you need to be able to help with the baby. That's Including right. my sanity. Yeah. Uh-huh. Okay. Mm-hmm. Amen. Amen. Keep it intact for a couple more years at least. At least. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, that's, so that was, that's big girl on that note. That's really kind of all I have. Oh, Okay. <laughs> Is there anything you would like to add or is there anything you would like people to walk away with? Um, yeah, given you've lived it. Honey, I think I dropped all my little nuggets. You but, did a good job. Uh, you oh, really did. I appreciate that, girl. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Will you live through it, you know? You know, yeah. But, um, <laughs> I, um and, and you know, people got to remember, we still kind of working on a boyfriend or not. You know, we still working on it. We still going through some of these things too. You know, talking about wanting to have kids, wanting to be married, all those different things. So, with that being said, you know, there's still a level of patience involved and stuff that we have to still keep having. You know, we're still technically, I guess, in that in between. Because you're talking about from to marriage, right? Yeah, stuff. yeah. We're still talking in this. We're in that space, really. So, mm-hmm. you know, I mean, and here we are, laughing, joking, talking about it. So, if we can do it, they can do it. I you got can. faith in all of I you. do. Okay. I really do. Yes. Okay. It's a beautiful time. Mm-hmm. Um, but when I was thirty three, did I think it was a beautiful time? No, I had a boyfriend. I was like, hey, when we marry, when we get married. <laughs> but, remember, but remember we talked about him sitting in that corner. We don't want him there. We don't want him there. So, want him there. Yeah. <laughs> and then the, the, the people even after him. Mm-mm. No, we we didn't like them either. Mm-mm. I don't want nobody, <laughs> nobody that I had None gone past my way right can be over there right now. Mm-hmm. Jesus, he will protect you, I tell mm-hmm. you, Lord. Because he... Mm-hmm. Okay, see, then that's another thing. You just said that you just dropped a word. Mm. Protect you. He will protect you. He protected you. you from something you thought you wanted. Thought I it would have been a mess. That would have been a whole mess. Yes. So there you go. That's another thing. Eh. Keep people should keep people... Listen, on a straight I mirror. just got saved from a mess. I, we got saved, yeah. He literally yeah. said, get over here. Yes. That's what he did. That's how, right. I, feel, that's how I feel like, you know, girl. And in retrospect, <clears throat> when you get all the things you want, you know, granted, like I said, we still in that space. But I think when we all get there, I think we're going to see 110% why the journey was like that anyway. So for now, what's that quote saying? Hmm. Smile through the pain. Smile through it. the bad days. Yeah. You know that quote probably yeah. better than I do. I but will, I just say, just keep it moving. Make it keep yeah. keep it moving. Mm-hmm. And like you said, rejoice, rejoice mm-hmm. in what was not has not you know transpired because it could have gone another way. And where would you be? Because mm-hmm. and don't think that we're sitting here telling you to be like, oh, okay, well, just don't be mad and just always be happy. That's not even realistic. But what I'm saying is, make that. A day to three days at most, and then and get move right on. back up on that. Move on. What they say? Up. If Jesus could rise in three days, that's right. So can we. Amen. Okay. <laughs> With that, amen. Okay. Now you get first example. That was our first so, example. That's what we should do. Okay. Have that's your real. moment. Eat your ice cream. And on that third day, you throw that in the trash. You throw that. Okay. In the, well, I'm gonna I'm finish my ice cream. I'm gonna finish it well, too. You, 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 I probably would too. <laughs> Until it's gone. Yeah. But, <laughs> I'm going to eat them last few scoops, scoops. But after that. Because you can waste a lot of time being stuck in a place where it's, right. that place is not serving you. Exactly. Do, are we not saying that you need a moment to grieve? Yes. Do you need a moment to heal? Yes. Yeah. But like we said, on the third days, you should rise again. Mm-hmm. Um, we're not trying to like, you know, say no. Like you said. Right. No, we not don't. Upset. Yeah. And you can still, we're human. Right. And guess what? Even <clears throat> after, look, after the three days, you can still be upset. Just keep moving. <laughs> okay. You can still be upset and you can still say, okay, through me being upset, I'm still going to go. I'm going to show up for people. I'm still going to do what I'm supposed to be doing. I'm still going to go to work. I'm still going to do the things I like to do. And even taking it back to the showing up for people. You know, I'm still going to be at your event. Or if I said I was going to do this, volunteer, whatever I'm going to do, I'm going to keep doing it. Because that's another thing, too, doing for other people is the moments Mm -hmm. that can help us, too. Mm -hmm. You know, that makes you feel good. You know, bring us back to us. Yeah, you know, makes you nice and humble, like you mm-hmm. know. Yeah, so yeah. So we just saying that, and if you 
I'm sure most of you know, but in just case you don't get yourself a good some a good sisters to go along the way. That's right. Because I I my I love my friends. Mm-hmm. Like my friends. <laughs> I love my friends. <laughs> I do too. They're wonderful. Shoot. <laughs> we ain't got no man at Christmas, but she be here every Christmas Eve. So like, <laughs> well, she wasn't this year. She wasn't here this year. But I'm just saying like when it's, yeah, it's like, mm-hmm. you know, you make, you make your moments and you make your experiences and you make your life yours in real life. Mm-hmm. Like it's your, you have certain choices so mm-hmm. you can choose to, you know, relish or you can choose the other way, and I don't. Right. I don't advise that. Um, choice. Mm-hmm. I never thought it was your choice. It's your choice. God, get, He did give us free will, yep. so mm-hmm. um, you can make a choice of how you want to approach certain things. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> and so, in other words, y'all, be positive about it. That's right. Be positive about oh. the in between overall yeah. year. Mm-hmm. Um, even like he gave us trials and tribulations, but he never said it would be easy mm-hmm. in no aspect of life. Mm-hmm. So yeah. that's really what I want y'all to gain from that. And with that being said, boo boo, thank you so much for being here. You're welcome. <laughs> this was <laughs> I, this was great. It was fulfilling. Um, okay. I hope it was the same for you. If it was good for you, yes. please, please, please subscribe. Do what you do. Like Listen, thumbs, thumbs up. up. Yes, do it all. <laughs> Um, y'all, y'all know what it is out like, there. Like, share, subscribe is what she meant to say. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I meant to say. Um, but until next time. Let's go. <laughs> and yes, stay tuned. And oh, and yes, thanks for being here. You're welcome. <laughs> hey, y'all. It's not on you. Oh, sorry. Uh-huh. <laughs> I'll put that in the outtakes. But hey, y'all. <laughs> you know what would be funny? It's not on you. Okay. And everybody can see how mean you are to me. All right. <laughs> <laughs>